Hello, people. My name is Uduak Akman. Of course, you can also call me uh, Buff. And today, quickly, I want us to look at what I call the word for the moment. What God wants you to know. The word for the moment. Uh, but before we go into it, uh, just this is just an introduction to tell you that this is a follow-up from what we did um, last time. If you've not seen the video on the training, I, we had a lot of testimonies uh, from that particular video. Yeah, I was even shocked from the responses uh, we got. You know, differently on WhatsApp, on Facebook, and uh, of course. And verbally, people really told us about uh, what God actually, you know, how God spoke to them through um, the last video, the training. So this is like a follow-up. If you've not listened to that video, please just uh, look at the, um, the link, of course, uh, already um, on your screen right now. But before we go into that, I want us to, you know, set like a foundation, like uh, just for you to know what we are going to be talking about today. So I don't just think that you are listening to... Uh, what you might not really, really understand. I, I want us to look at uh, how God wants you to do things. How God wants you to do things. There are so many ways we we'll do things uh, that will actually give us the right kind of result. So that leads us to the next thing, you know, doing the right thing that brings the right result. The fact that you do things and get results doesn't mean that it's the right thing. Uh, of course, people are what people are actually after this day, most especially are Christians in the Christendom. They are looking at the result. They are not really looking at the source of um, everything that happens. That's why you see that they highly question uh, whatever they go through in life. They highly question whatever their pastor is saying. They highly question whatever you know people are saying around. As, as far as long as they can actually get their desired result, they are cool with it, which is not really the way God wants us to live. And you know, in this dispensation. Also, we are also going to look at how not to run with assumptions. A lot of people run with assumptions, you know. I've heard so much teaching, you know, on giving. Somebody will even tell you that um, there's a message I heard that says that uh, if you need anything in life, just go and give money because money answers all things. In as much as I don't want to go into that because it's really, really controversial because that times God might actually, you know, put like a burden in your spirit or God can instruct you uh, to give. So I don't want to go into that. I've even heard where people are saying that if your rent is one million naira. And all you have with you is hundred thousand naira. Then that hundred thousand naira is a seed. And and so you see that a lot of Christians, you know, wrong with this assumption. A lot of Christians begin to go wrong with instructions that was given to individuals at different points in time. And that's why this is very very important. And I need you to listen to this so that you see that um, you don't just run presumptuously. You don't just assume. You know all the days of your life and if you have actually been living on assumptions and that's why you see that it's not that for every step you take you do not readily get results somebody will come and tell you that ah, i gave you some amount of money and the next day god gave me a particular amount of money and so you will now turn god to you know a money doubler how, how is has god different from money doubler when you have the mentality that when you give point down there to this way you can receive tomorrow. There's another time I even heard a message that says that if you need a job, maybe currently your job you currently have is about 100,000 naira and you want a job of 300,000 naira, then you start giving a tithe of 30,000 naira. I'm not saying this is this is wrong, but what I'm trying to say is that there are times God gives specific instructions to people. It doesn't mean that you're not beginning to run with it. Now, you cannot begin to use your experience or make your experience a doctrine and so when people come out to share testimony you say no i want to key into this particular testimony they begin to do the same thing when god has naturally not moved you to do that particular thing if you look at first Kings chapter 17 verse 13 you discover that after elijah spoke to the widow of zarephath and told the widow of zarephath go and bring water as she's turned and she wanted to go he said please bring a morsel of meal or bread for me he discovered that the woman complained the woman complained, but the moment she complained, Elijah, Elijah did what? Elijah said, for the barrel of milk shall not cease. It was based on that word that the woman turned back and brought the milk for Elijah. Even though God had already commanded the widow, the widow. of course, God commands a lot of people at different points in time. God inspires us to give. God inspires us to do things at different points in time. And that's why you see that in our last video, what we said was that for every time in our life there's always a need for us to hear and you know, for us to receive an instruction the fact that god said this yesterday doesn't mean that it's going to work today i heard about the, the man of god that was always preaching and you know there was a day he said he heard god told him 
take out your suit and throw it to the crowd. As soon as he did that, a lot of people fell and got healing. The next time he did it, he got the same result. The third time he wanted to do it, God corrected him and God said, and he correct, the Holy Spirit prompted him and you know, he had a, a, a check in his spirit and he had to stop that even though he was still going to get results. But the point is that if that will now become like an idol, you know, to him. So he corrected that and God moved, you know, at in different, in different versions, different, in different um, levels at different times, even in his life and in ministry. Why? Because he was, you know, ready to receive new instructions for a different um, time and different season. So according to the story in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 13, God sent a word through the prophet Elijah to the widow of Zarephath and it was on that basis that the woman gave her everything and the truth is that for, because the word of God will never fail, the barrel of meal never cease until God sends down a rain. So we cannot begin to say because God told the widow of Zarephath or God sent Elijah to the widow of Zarephath, give this then based on that particular scripture, once I read this particular scripture and I begin to give as God actually asked me to go and give everything in my pocket. I've got actually asked me to go. So that's one thing is very, very important because God moves at different times with different um, season and with different um, instruction. So the, the faith of the widow of Zarephath was based on the word and she received. And that is one thing that you really need to know. Another example I can readily give is personally it happened to me. I went for a program very close to the house some years ago, I think about 2013. Then I, I had just 250 naira in my pocket. And when the time of offering came, I wanted to give the 200 naira because I knew 50 naira could take me home from where you know I was. And I heard in my spirit, do not give the 200 naira, give the 50 naira. And I looked around and I said, who spoke to me? And the point is that giving is a good thing. And I was giving to God. Because I heard in my spirit, if not that I knew how God speaks to me, then I would have disobeyed the voice. So, but I obeyed. I gave the 15 naira, and I and I went out. Just about when I was stepping out, I met a young man. Of course, a young man I knew very well, a member of the church. And he came to me and said, he's going home, he doesn't have a dime in his pocket. And he needs to come back for the same program later in the evening that he needs 200 naira. At that point, I remember that God told me, give the 15 naira. Now, the, the thing is that, the giving I gave, because I, I handed over the money to the guy because I knew God already instructed me ahead, not knowing that God was going to send somebody to come and collect the money or somebody needed that particular amount of money. So you see that sometimes we need to clearly, you know, be moved and inspired by God, not just anybody coming out to tell us and say, come and give one million naira, ten million naira, and the next thing you are doing, you are going outside and you are giving that particular money when God has actually not inspired you. God might actually have a, a, another need. For that particular amount but the point is we always need to search our spirit to obey the move of the holy spirit the holy spirit will always command or inspire every move you know from that's why you see that we need to really really be sensitive to what god is saying so that we don't live based on assumptions or on what um god has not as said we should do. Let's look at um, 2 Kings chapter 6. We are going to look at 14 and 15 just to further uh, buttress the point on this. It was the story of Elisha and his servant. They both had, you know, different perception about the particular situation. It was, the, you know, there was there was like a chariot, a war. Like people, you know, gathered against them and they were coming to arrest Elisha. But Elisha had an information the servant did not have. And so that affected their disposition to the same situation. What I'm trying to say is that what I know can actually make me move in life with everything, you know, as if nothing is going on in the country, the economies will not affect me because of the information I have. And that's how God always wants to, you know, bring his own people up. God wants everybody to begin to look at him, but he gives them instructions at different times and that's why you see that people at different times in the same economy get different results. Isaac is an example of the same. In the time of famine, God told, God appeared to him and said, stay in the land. Isaac stayed in the land, sold and got a hundred full returns while people were actually going through difficulties. There was no food in the land but Isaac was really doing well and that's why you see that God always gives. So back to the story I was talking about, Second Kings um, chapter Second Kings, chapter six, fourteen, uh, 14 to uh, fifteen. Look at it. Fourteen says, um, "Therefore send he either horses and chariots and great host 
And they came night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, master, how shall we do? He saw the situation and he panicked. But the point is, if you read further down, look at where um, verse 17 of the same scripture. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full, and horses and chariots of fire ran about Eli- Elisha. So God already sent help, you know, to these people. But the point is, because the servant did not know about the help God already sent, he, he panicked the moment he saw this, and that's what a lot of us do. We run with assumptions, we run with the first response we give to every situation or everything we see is fear. And so that's why you see that a lot of other people, you know, are the ones that are guiding our path in life. And that's why you see people go to different places just because they need to hear instruction. So they don't care about the medium of the instruction or the medium of, of information, but all they need to do, as long as this will keep them safe or this will make provision for them, they are cool with it, just like I said. That's why you see that the nudgings we get, you know, when you begin to work with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit begins to build you up, then at different point in time, it begins to drop instructions in our spirit to guide our path in life, you know, to guide our way in life, you know, to, 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 you know, to move us further in life. And those times when God is not saying anything, like I always say that, those times could be the times of training that trust now needs to be up. Further hear God. You cannot apply the same principle that worked yesterday to the principle that worked today. In the case of, of, of Peter, if you look at Acts, you know, chapter 15, uh, chapter 5, 15 to 16, it was the shadow of Peter that was healing people. If you look at it, when it was, it was time of Paul, it was the mantle and apron that was healing the people, casting out demons and all those things. So, does it mean that God could not use the shadow of Paul to heal people? No, it's different. The only thing is that the Holy Spirit wants you to always depend on Him for every step you take in life. And that's why you see that for you to always need to go back to Him to get further instructions. You cannot box the Holy Spirit. And that's why you see that John chapter 3 verse 8 talks about the fact that the man of the Spirit is like a wind. The Holy Spirit can give you this instruction today and it can give you further instruction tomorrow. So we always need to go back to Him or to pay attention and begin to listen to those words. There are different words for every stage we get to in life. There are different words for every season of our life. But you must need to go back to the Holy Spirit. You need to go back to the Holy Spirit to always give you these instructions that we can run with it. It worked yesterday doesn't mean it can work today. The Holy Spirit is calling you and He wants you to always listen to Him. Pay attention to Him. There's a word that He will always send you for each season and each time of your life. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to share, do not forget to subscribe. If this is your first time on speaking to channel, and to our returning subscribers, I want to say thank you so much. It's been a blessing um, to have you here. Thank you so much. The name is Uduak Akman, and God bless you real good. Before I go, I pray for you that you will not run with another person's mission. You will not run with another person's information. You will not run, you know, with somebody else's parts in life. God will keep you and your life will remain in his word all the days of your life. Thank you so much. God bless you. Real good.